Welcome to Crosstalk Solutions. My name's Chris, and today we are at the Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania Motor Speedway installing a point to multi point network for this racetrack. Stay tuned. Jim Zufall, he's the official track announcer for the Pittsburgh PA Motor Speedway. Thanks for having us out here, Jim, and tell us a little bit about the track. You know, the track's unique in a couple of ways. Uh, for one, it's its size. Uh, we call it Dirt's Monster Half Mile. Didn't get that name for nothing. Half Mile is a bit of a misnomer. I would say as you look over our shoulders here, you can see the Euclid tires at the in, inner part of the track. It's probably a half mile there. I would say closer to five-eighths at the outside fence. It's wow. a beast. Probably the most unique part of the track, though, is it wasn't always here. This used to be somewhere else. Back in the, I, w I wanna say 1940s, a track was built about 15 miles from here called Heidelberg Raceway. Near the end of the 1970s, a gentleman named Nick Garin and his wife Emma literally contracted to take, this, take Heidelberg Raceway apart, bolt by bolt, bleacher by bleacher. Everything was literally trucked here and Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania Motor Speedway as it stands now is in its 40th year on this location. And then going strong ever since and you guys do races all throughout the summer every Saturday night? Beginning of May through our big race at the end of the season with has been for the last, this will be the 31st year, it's the Pittsburgh 100. We have an out of town sanctioning body, brings national drivers from all over the country and we end the first weekend in October. What's your favorite part of being an announcer? You know, interacting with the people. Yeah. I get to walk the pits. You know, when it's not, it's 85 degrees today. It's a little rough. You can see I'm kind of warm. <laughs> oh, we were here setting up all day yesterday. We, <laughs> so we you know what it is. Yeah. Uh, so, but interacting with the drivers, the race teams, the families. Interacting with the winners down on Victory Lane is fun. Uh, coming up the steps and, you know, people high-fiving you or wanting to talk to you or ask you a question on the way up. Yeah. That's fun. The steps, I'll save you asking the question, what's my least favorite part? You walked up these <laughs> steps a few times. A couple times, yeah. Try 10 times on a Saturday <laughs> night. It, it wears you out pretty quick. I walked on uh, one of the boards over there over the weekend. I heard a crack. <laughs> He's like, well, let's not step on that one. Yeah, remember the 1940s thing I said? Yeah, yeah there's a few, there may be a few of those still around. <laughs> right. Well, excellent. Well, we're looking forward to a good night tonight, and thanks for having us out of the track. It's a pleasure to meet you. We are thrilled to have you here. Excellent. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, so we've already set up the Cambium Network's EPMP 3000. It's actually right on that yellow building right back here. It's on a 10 foot mast. You can see it sort of sticking up right about the mid section of that building. Now that building is where they have the Fios 150 by 150 fiber connection and they need to extend that fiber connection to four different locations on the racetrack. The first location is the ticket booth. It's right down, down that way. The second location is right where I'm standing. This is the press box. And then if you follow me out here, we have two other locations. We have the pit booth right here. That's where they record all the scores for the racers. That needs internet because they actually have a camera on all those scores that beams up to the press booth so that they have instant uh, re you know, race results and stuff like that. And then finally, we have the pit concession stand, which is that gray building right in the center of the racetrack. It also has the scoreboard. So yeah, this is basically a perfect environment for a point to multi-point, and we're really lucky that we have line of sight hopefully to all four of those locations. There's one that's a little bit iffy. We'll have to see about that. But yeah, what a great, uh, what a great use for this point to multi-point uh, equipment. All right, I'm here with Aaron Zufall of Zufall Communications, and thank you so much for having us out here. Yeah, thanks so much for coming and hooking us up with all this stuff. I really appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely, no problem. And, and tell us a little bit about your company. Yeah, so uh, Zufall Communications provides a variety of networking, video surveillance, and business phone services. We're based in Ithaca, New York, serving uh, most of central New York, but uh, Pittsburgh is my home, which is why I'm here. This is where I grew up. 
My dad's the announcer here, so um, anytime I have the opportunity to work on a project like this down here, um, I always love to come and help out. All right, now you built their original network from scratch and kind of just piecing together various yeah. pieces of equipment and working in your spare time and donating your time. So tell us about the sort of pain points that you're feeling when you approach a network in that way. Yeah, so we, we built the network primarily to service uh, security cameras that are, that are placed throughout here, and we used uh, a mesh system to do that. And it, it works okay, but um, this was one of those situations where once something little was in place, the, the client and, and you know the, the audience members here started using it more and more and more, and so what we needed it for grew. And so uh, the two main problems that I'm hoping we can solve this weekend are our Wi-Fi coverage is not very good. Uh, anyway, it's really spotty. It's really strong when you're close to the APs, but I'm hoping to expand that a little bit. And then the other thing I'm hoping that we can do is uh, add Wi-Fi to the grandstands because uh, like a lot of dirt tracks, we now post live timing online so you can see you know what each car's lap time is in real time and um, we'd love for everybody in the stands to be able to to watch that without having to use their cellular data yeah it's it sounds like one of those situations where you know you eliminate a bottleneck and you just find the next bottleneck yeah absolutely and and also you know it's one of those things where um, the cameras especially were a situation where they were like, ah, you know, I, I don't think we need them. And then once they have them, they can't live without them, right? right? Of course. So it's just, you know, it's an ever expanding thing. Well, I mean, this new gear, uh, the Cambium gear, is really going to give you excellent coverage for the entire grandstand as well as all of the pit area out here. And uh, yeah, I think it's going to be a rock solid solution and certainly better than, than a mesh network deployment. Yeah, I'm really excited. And I mean, even just looking at it as we pulled it out of the box, it even just looks a lot beefier than what we're using now. So right. I'm, I'm really excited to get everything hooked up and, and see how it works. All right, let's get going. All right. Yeah, so we're just getting this new Cambium access point all hooked up. Uh, we went with the E501S uh, CM Pilot Series. This thing is a sectorized uh, Wi-Fi antenna. The reason we picked that for here is so we're blasting Wi-Fi down here on the stands and not really losing anything behind us. Uh, it's 12090. Um, I think it's 2x2 two two MIMO. Uh, and for what we need here, it's going to be perfect. All right, so we were debating whether or not we needed to add an, an additional outdoor access point right at the midpoint where this concession stand is, basically where those trucks are. And so what we're seeing here is we're at the very far end of the stadium, right next to the dirt track on the backside, and we're gonna see if we can pick up the signals from the E501Ss that are at the top of the stands way back up there. Now, we measured it on Google Maps, and that is a fifth of a mile away from where I'm standing right here. Uh, I have full bars uh, on, uh, from those access points. Let's see what I can get as far as speed goes. All right, so speed test done. From my iPhone, a fifth of a mile away from the access points that are in the top of the stands, I'm getting 40 megabit download and 20 megabit upload. That's pretty amazing. Day two here at the Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania Motor Speedway. I'm here with Chris Catania from Cambium Networks. Cambium was nice enough to sponsor all of the equipment for this build. Thank you guys so much for doing that. Absolutely, and thank you guys for bringing the opportunity to us. And so what we have here behind us is the shack, right? This is where the internet comes in. This is the only place on the property where they were able to get internet, and they have a Fios 150 by 150 fiber connection set up in here. So what we did is we took that and we piped it out to this EPMP 3000 that you see up on the pole, excuse me, 3000L. And uh, Chris, tell me about the 3000L. Yeah, the 3000L is an 802.11ac Wave 2 access point. It supports up to 120 clients and it is IP67 rated. 
Now, this is a little bit of overkill for this deployment, but it's gonna provide a rock solid connection. That IP67 means that it's gonna stand up to the Pennsylvania winters and also, of course, the Pennsylvania summers. It is quite hot out here right now, uh, hot and humid. It's, yes. it's a wonderful combination, but it will be almost bulletproof as far as the wireless goes. We have a little bit of elevation over the actual racetrack, and this is going to provide more than enough bandwidth and throughput to the four subscriber modules that we have set up throughout the property. The subscriber modules we went with are the Force 300-16. Tell us a little bit about those guys. So the Force 300-16 is an integrated 16 dBi flat panel 802.11ac Wave 2 subscriber. Uh, these guys are great based on the distance that we're going. We have plenty of gain to get back to the access point. Also, all of our AC equipment has uh, an always-on spectrum analyzer, which really helped us out when we were doing our channel plan for the mix of Wi-Fi being backhauled by also 5 gig. And what's the beam width on this thing? Beam width is about 20 degrees. All right, so we have this subscriber antenna up over here at the pit concession stand. Chris, what are you seeing? So what we're seeing right now on EA line is we're right about a NEG 51, NEG 52 uh, RSSI. And when we do a wireless link test, we're seeing 129 down and 133 up. With barely line of sight. Barely line of sight in a 40 meg channel. Yeah, the uh, EPMP 3000 is right about there. To provide wireless access to the guests that are going to be sitting in these stands, we went with the Cambium Network's E501S. Now this is an outdoor sectorized access point that shoots a 90 degree beam whichever direction it's pointing, right? So this is going to be more than sufficient for covering the crowd and as a matter of fact, we were actually able to pick up the wireless signal from these access points all the way on the other side of the racetrack, probably about 0.2 or about a fifth of a mile away. So tell me about the E501S. Yeah, the E501S is a 9120 sectorized Wi-Fi access point. It's IP67 rated. It actually has a PoE out auxiliary port as well. Uh, and it supports up to 256 clients. Yeah, 256 clients. We've got four of these on the stands. There's three on the main grandstand here and one more on this sort of side set of stands over here they're gonna have perfect guest coverage. And of course, we throttled it down because you don't want them sucking up all your bandwidth, but we can throttle these Cambium network access points by both per client as well as per network. So I think we did five megabits by two megabits for each individual client, and then a total of 50 megabits and 20 megabits for the entire guest network. For the indoor area, so the concession stands, the pit crew area, we went with the Cambium Network's E410, uh, this is an indoor access point. This one's mounted in a drop ceiling with the drop ceiling mount, but it can also be mounted on the beams in between the drop ceiling tiles. Chris, tell us about the E410. Yeah, E410, 802.11ac Wave 2 Wi-Fi access point, supporting again up to 256 clients. And like you said, there's a variety of mul uh, mounting options for this device that could be mounted for drop ceilings or it could actually be set on a tabletop with included feet. This access point, along with all the other access points for not only the staff and the concessions and the pit crews, but also for the guests, makes one cohesive network around the entire property. So theoretically, you can come here, connect as a guest, and have complete coverage no matter where you go. And that was kind of the goal of this project. Think, Tom, you ready to race? I'm ready to race. I'm ready for it. <laughs> Maybe let me borrow a car. I think I could fit in there. <laughs> Tom, thanks for coming out, man. What do you think of uh, the racetrack? The racetrack's cool. The Cavian Networks is even cooler, though. That's <laughs> <laughs> you like our point to multi point. It's working. I'm, we've been way over there, pretty far away. Uh, I've been taking photos, full speed uploads. It, it works. Yeah. Yeah, we've got mostly, it looks like 2.4 gigahertz as far away as you want to go. 
But we've seen a lot, of, we've seen already upwards of 65 people on the guest network and they haven't announced it yet to the crowd. So we're excited to see what it ends up being. Yeah, but the connectivity and everything, I've been doing like speed tests walking around, but and looking at the cars, so it's really cool being here. It's actually, when these cars go by, it's, it hits you. Oh yeah. <laughs> They're loud. Yeah, <laughs> especially a bunch of wireless nerds like us. Yeah, Listen, we're not used to this. <laughs> we kind of look out of place here, everyone's looking at us. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. All right. <laughs> yeah. Here's the deal. We partnered up with Crosstalk Solutions and Cambium Networks, and we have sponsored an installation of uh, a Wi-Fi system that pretty much covers most of the track here. If you're in the grandstands, we can pretty much guarantee you'll get a good signal. This is sort of an experiment for us. We want to see what this system can handle. So we're going to run a contest right now. If you take out your phone, connect to the guest Wi-Fi, we are going to give away to one person a prize package, which is this. First, you will spend the rest of tonight in the air-conditioned press box up here with all of us, staying nice and cool, enjoying the races. And then you also get a nice prize package we put together with some swag from the tracks partners at k and Filters and Hoosier Racing Tires. And uh, in a little bit, probably after an admission, we'll draw a winner. So we got the whole crew here. We ran a contest where people could log into the Wi-Fi so that we were trying to stress test it a little bit, see what kind of results we got. Here we are in the Cambium desktop, and what we ended up seeing was about a total of 138 clients connected, and I think the maximum we saw was about 74 megabits of throughput. Correct. So let's talk about what we're seeing here. Uh, this is our maximum. Uh, number of clients, we can see 26 clients in the 5 gigahertz spectrum, 105 clients in the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum, and then if we go over here to the EPMP 3000, there we go, here we can see the live throughput chart from the EPMP 3000. We can see that right now we are doing about 20 megabit, 20 megabit up, and I can't tell the down, 18 down, oh there it is right there at yep. the top, so about 27 up is changing all the time and 24 down right in that range so Aaron what do you think yeah it was great uh, the, the Wi-Fi performed so well we crashed the website with people trying to enter the contest <laughs> they definitely got to the website yeah they did they did um, but yeah it was awesome yeah, I think the thing that surprised me the most is just how far these sector APs can reach back in the track I was so surprised that we were almost in the back stretch of this track and it's really hard to gauge how big this place is until you're actually here that's not close. No. And I mean, it helps that we have line of sight and that we're elevated, but, but still, I mean, even um, the fact that it, you know, it's able to hear a signal from a phone that far away is, is really incredible. Yeah, definitely incredible. And uh, Chris, anything to add? Uh, no, I mean, I think the EPMP performed excellent. Uh, I think frame utilization stayed below 30% for the entire duration of the evening. Uh, the CM Pilot devices performed great. I think at the far side of the track from uh, Google Earth, I saw we're about a thousand feet away, still getting a two to three bar connection from the CM Pilot guys on the stands. Excellent, yeah, and uh, like I said, we couldn't have done this without the hard work of Chris, Aaron, well, Tom wasn't here. I was just hanging out. Was Tom's just here out. to hang out for yeah, the night. But, out. <laughs> but of course, Dave Barger and Dave's dad, who is behind the nice. camera over there. <laughs> so thank you guys all for certainly coming out here, and uh, thank you for being such yeah, a great host. Yeah, thank you for coming. We really We had a great time. Uh, Tom, what did you think about Cambium and all this stuff? No, this was great. It was it was fun. Like he said, when we were all the way on the back side of the, it was still working perfectly fine. So I'm still backing up my photos. I was taking of all the cars out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've had a really, really good time, and now I I think it is uh, it's beer time. It's it is beer o'clock. Yeah, beer o'clock. So, so thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. My name is Chris with Crosstalk Solutions, along with Aaron with Zoofall, Chris with Kit, Chris with Catania, no, Chris with Cambium Networks, <laughs> David Barger with Crosstalk Solutions, of course, Tom from Lawrence Tech. Thank you guys all so much for watching. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, make sure you click that subscribe button down below. All right, guys, what do you think? Let's get out of here. Let's do yeah. it. All right, thanks. All right. Break. <laughs>